And now, Inside the NFL, with your hosts, Glenn Dawson and Nick Bonacani. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the 12th consecutive season of Inside the NFL on HBO. This is the longest-running sports program in the history of cable television, and we're very proud to be part of it. To my right, my friend and co-host, Mr. Nick Bonacani, Nicholas. Twelve years is a long time. And you and I have been doing a show together for ten years. As a matter of fact, that's longer than three quarters of all marriages in America. But you know something? Looking at football this past weekend, the way those quarterbacks went down, I was wondering if you were going to make the show this week. Oh, no. No way to get me out there once again. You know, of the three quarterbacks that went down, they weren't just ordinary quarterbacks. They were all quarterbacks of playoff teams last year. Bernie Kosar of Cleveland. I don't think that's a big problem because they had better than Gary Daniels to come in. He proved that he could win last week against the Chiefs. 49ers, Montana went down. They have Steve Young. He's proven he can win in the National Football League. I think the big question mark is when Warren Moon went down, they replaced him with Cody Carlson. And I'm sure people around the country will be saying, who is Cody Carlson? Cody Carlson, yes, he's the backup quarterback for Warren Moon. He didn't even play full-time for the Baylor Bears, but he will be playing full-time this week. But Jerry Glanville, the head coach of the Oilers, is not going to put a lot of pressure on him, Lenny. They're going to depend on defense and the running game. Good running backs, Rozier, Pinkett, Lorenzo White, and Alonzo Highsmith. But who knows? This could be the week that a star is born just like you were in your career. <laughs> I wasn't even a flicker for five years I sat on the bench so long. You only play in this game if the other guy is playing lousy or he gets hurt. Well, in the case of Joe Montana, he is hurt. Steve Young's going in. They know he can play. He is a good quarterback. As a matter of fact, since becoming a member of the San Francisco 49ers, he has thrown 11 touchdown passes and only thrown one interception. He can play. Yeah, he can play. He did that all in seven ball games. As a matter of fact, he rushed for 239 yards in those seven games. I think that even though Joe Montana's out of the football game will not play, Bill Walsh, the head coach, will be able to sleep nights because he knows that Steve Young will be at the helm. I'll tell you what Steve Young is going to do. He's going to speed up Joe Montana's recovery period. He is a player. But let's not forget how special Joe Montana really is. In the last 14 games that Joe has started, he has thrown three or more touchdown passes nine times. And last Sunday was one of them. The best game of the NFL's opening week took place in the New Orleans Superdome. Division in the right place is behind us. 
A team that the 49ers couldn't beat in the 1987 playoffs were the Minnesota Vikings, led by Wade Wilson. In their opener at Buffalo, the Vikings were unable to display their postseason form, and Wilson painfully discovered that it might not be too long before Buffalo is famous for more than just chicken wings. Even without their premier pass rusher, Bruce Smith, the Bills sacked Wilson six times. The Vikings managed only 10 points on the day. The Bills' offense wasn't exactly explosive either, but it was the debut of rookie tailback Thurman Thomas, number 34, that provided Buffalo with the difference. Thomas carried 18 times for 86 yards and this touchdown to lift Buffalo to a 13-10 triumph, their first opening day win in six years. Plagued by drug suspensions and player holdouts, Giants head coach Bill Parcells wasn't exactly filled with new Rodney Pim and Vigor. And an early 13 to nothing deficit against the Redskins on Monday night did little to sweeten his sour disposition. But in the second half, Parcells team lifted the clouds of despair with some big play heroics. Linebacker Gary Reasons and Safety Town Flynn team for a score on this blocked punt return. After Flynn's third block punt touchdown in the last three seasons, the Giants secured their first lead of the night. And once they had it, they never let go. The defending world champs found themselves on the ropes, and then they encountered number 52, Pepper Johnson, who delivered a knockout punch. Looking something like Carl Lewis after a steady diet of Dunkin' Donuts, Jim Burke, number 64, sealed a dramatic 27-20 comeback win, and the Giants served notice that they regained the form that won them a Super Bowl two seasons ago. This Sunday, the Giants host the 49ers as quarterback Phil Simms looks for his fourth consecutive victory over San Francisco. The new story in the sports this week, Jay Schrader goes to the Los Angeles Raiders, but Lenny, I think the big story is that the best general manager in football, Bobby Beathard, ends up with a pro bowler, offensive tackle Jim Lachey, a couple of high draft choices that could ensure the future of the Redskins. You know, Nick, if I had your money, I would buy an NFL team. The first person I would hire would be Bobby Beathard. Bobby said the only way this deal is going to be made is if Jim Lachey is involved. Now, Jim Lachey was number one draft choice out of Ohio State. He's a two-time pro bowler, and he's joining us now via the satellite on NFL Crosstalk. Jim, the last time we saw you and talked to you was at the San Diego Zoo in front of the elephants talking about the Chargers. Since that time, you've made some traveling to the Raiders and also now to the Redskins. Now, you played last Sunday for the Raiders against your old teammates, the Chargers. Uh, we heard that the trade was, was finalized before the game. When did you find, uh, find out about it, and how was it told to you? Well, I finally found out, uh, you know, after the game, uh, I came in the locker room and had a message that I was supposed to meet with Al Davis, uh, you know, that evening, and, and uh, I got over to his office, and we sat there and talked, uh, you know, off and off for four hours, uh, went and got a physical, and uh, next thing I know, I'm, I'm here in Washington playing with the Redskins. How did Jay Schrader, he's going out to the Los Angeles Raiders. You have Steve Gerline, the second-year man out of Notre Dame. He seems like he's doing a good job for the Raiders. But will Schrader make the Raiders a playoff contender? Oh, definitely. You know, they have a great team. There's a lot of uh, speed at wide receivers. Uh, Marcus Allen at running back. Uh, you know, Bo Jackson gets in there after the baseball season. He's going to add a lot to that team. Uh, you know, they got Donnie Mosbar on the offensive line, Charlie Hanna. Bill Lewis, you know, they got some great players there, and I think uh, once they get it all put together, they're going to be a, uh, a, very, a very big contender in the AFC. 